Oh, end of the path. Mwah. Headed to the bog fest. Gotta be honest, I'm gonna throw this one out before we start. I really am feeling my potential for this one being a success. Hi, welcome to the channel and welcome to the Glencoe Mountain Ski Resort. This is an amazing little spot in the heartland of Scotland, about a two hour drive from the start of the NC500. But in all honesty, down here, it's probably not the best place to start the video. This, in all honesty, seems the best place to start the video. At the very top of the Glencoe Mountain Ski Resort with views on one side of me, a little bit of snow and some mist behind me. To be fair, I couldn't resist this reading up to the NC500 trying to stop off at Glencoe and get a little bit of snowboarding done on the way up here, which is exactly what I'm going to try and do today. And I'll catch you guys in a few days time heading north to the NC500. Morning. Well, can't deny this is a bit of a disappointment. In all honesty, I'd hope this shot now was going to be me driving towards the first destination on the NC500, but to be fair, we've had a few issues. Some mild and some not. I guess I'll start with the small one first. The diesel eater. It's been pretty cold over the past few nights and I had a vision of popping up the roof tent on this trip and feeding the diesel eater into it to keep it warm. I've brought the diesel eater with me. It's in the back of the car, but unfortunately, my daughter cleaned the car out before I left and the bag that contains all the connectors, pipes and everything else that goes with the diesel eater is sat at home in my shed at the minute. So I won't be using the diesel eater on this trip. Not such a bad issue, you know, if you follow the series that I could probably battle through and deal with the cold. I've just been in the French Alps for two months and it weren't too bad over there. But then comes the second issue. I did do a day snowboarding up on the mountain here at Glencoe the other day. I say a day, it was two runs. The conditions were horrific. It was, in all honesty, a complete waste of time. But for my troubles, on the second one, I took a really nice fall straight onto one of my ribs, the left side this time. And some of you might remember that this is now the third time I've took a rib issue snowboarding over the past 12 months. And I can honestly say that this one is the most painful that I've done out of the three. And again, you know me, I'll battle through it. It is only a rib you know, or a muscle around that area. Even if it goes to the doctors or the hospital, it's just gonna be two months worth of rest and let it heal and do its own thing. But then comes the third issue, and this is the real stinger. Today is a beautiful day up in the highlands of Scotland. It really is fantastic. But this is the last day. It's gonna be a nice day. I checked the weather report last night, and for the next 12 days, it's just gonna be pure, intense, heavy rain. I mean, I might be exaggerating a little bit because it says it might snow and there might be a bit of hail in there as well. So, you know, it's looking drastic. So what do we do? Well, we make the best of a bad situation. In all honesty, I'm going to head back to Leicester. I'm going to probably spend a week there sorting the car out, myself out and a few other bits and then readdress and head out somewhere else. But that's not going to make for the best video. So I've devised a cunning plan. You see, there's a spot down at Loch Lomond that I've wanted to get to for years now. And today could be the perfect opportunity to do that. On top of that, as I'm heading south, I've been scoping the maps and I think I've found an absolutely pucker car camping spot right next to a beach for the night. So I figured we'd head down to Conic Hill and then slowly meander down to this spot for the night. Got a few good bunches in the crib. I think we can make the best of a bad situation and have a pretty good day before we head back to Leicester. <laughs> say it regardless of everything it is nice being up in Scotland with all this big old scenery around 
beautiful. All the mountains before us, I was coming down, and now all the greenery as we're coming into the Loch Lomond National Park. Yeah, well chuffed. I think I'm going to do this in a different order as well. Normally, I come down the west side of Loch Lomond, like down the road that everybody drives, and it's a bit of a mer road to be fair. A couple of years ago, somebody told me to take the east side, it cuts for a place called Colander, and it's supposed to be really scenic. I've never done it, so yeah, today might be the day for it. I think we'll check it out. Oh, this was a good idea. It's cutting some mighty fine scenery, little locks and snowy peaks. Ah, and the road's a lot less traffic. This is Loch Lugney, apparently, however you pronounce it. And it's even got ducked, and it's massive. It stretches miles that way, and miles that way, and I think it's one of three locks along this road. I can't tell you, the drive's just beautiful. It cuts through all forests, little villages. It's not overly busy like the other road around Loch Lomond where you just get shots of Lomond all the way. You get different views along this route. And yeah, it's been enjoyable to drive. Good news as well, it brings us round to the side of Loch Lomond where Connick Hill is. And it's only about another 45 minute drive. So yeah, I think we need to keep moving. What a little spot that way. Beautiful man, Scottish Highlands. Okay, I'm going to hold my hands up. I'm not entirely sure we we're on the right road here. It seems to be taking me into the middle of Bumblefluff nowhere, but there are other traffic or cars on the road, so I guess we just follow them. I haven't seen any signs lately, that's all I'm saying. Oh, wait, one coming up here. Yeah, Glasgow, that doesn't help. Well, by the state of these amazing views coming through these trees of the locks, yeah, I think we're about here, mate. Wicked. I've got to be honest, it looks just as disgustingly amazing on that side of the road as well. Wicked, I think that might be the Conic Hill. I hope it's not because it looks quite high. Yeah, the infamous Conic Hill then. I've got to be honest, I think there's some car camping spots around here. It can't be this car park though, although my ticket, £2.70, after I found some bloody pound coins, scraping for all the euros, yeah, it's valid till 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Random as both, but I can't imagine you'd be overnight here. Uh, maybe. We're not, but we are going up the hill. 2.6 miles then. There and back, 1.3 each way, which doesn't sound a lot, but it's supposed to be a bit of a pain in the bus care. Apparently, you get so far up and there's no trail and they're redoing it or something, and it's an absolute bog fest. And then further on up, they say it becomes a bit of a scramble. So, I don't know. We'll go take a look and see how we go, eh? Oh, dude, that dog's legs. He's just bog fest, mate. It doesn't bode well. Look at the state of it. You can't see from here, but believe the dog's half mud. Oh, man. Oh, mama. This puppy's relentless. Look at the state of it going up. We just had steps, you know, them steps where they're not quite small enough and a little bit too big and oh, it's just awkward and tiring. And now we've got rugged stones. It's a beater. It really is. Bloody views better be good. That's all I'm saying. In all honesty, it's a pretty tidy trail. I mean, it's giving some nice views already, eh? It's a nice little meander through the countryside. Hills and dales. Pretty popular, plenty of people on it. Yeah, man. None too shabby. It is a bit steeper. <laughs> Look at this weird old light of the sun over here, trying to peek through. Just having none of it. It's remnants of the winter hanging on to springtime though. It's looking kind of cool over here. It's damn cold though, windy as both. That's why I took a few layers off. <sighs> Sweat me chunger off, mate. Just spent two months in the Alps at bloody 10,000 degrees or 10,000 foot and minus fives and stuff. I think it's about three degrees today. It's bloody sweltering. Good news though, I think we're about halfway. And I've only been boshing it for about 20, 25 minutes. Got a bit of a military pace going on, don't you know, even with the rib. Seems to be doing it some good to be fair. Stretching out, I guess. We'll see at the end of the day when I'm crippled over, <laughs> crying. Oh wow, the view's really opening up now. I hadn't realised, I just stopped and looked behind me. That'd be good. Once we get this big lump out of the way, 
when we get to the top yeah mate of high hopes should have some tidy views it's nice to be able to see the top as well now it's been relentless sweating yeah. another sneaky pit stop we're getting closer though i gotta say though i wish i knew which one of these islands it is because it's one of these islands that some old lady or some lady from before who supposedly was quite eccentric ended up putting a load of wallabies on one of the islands i don't even know if you can actually visit the island but the wallabies are still supposed to be there apparently i don't know if it's one of these there are a number of islands in Loch Lomond, you know what I mean? But yeah, I'd love to know. I'll put the name on the screen. I'll do a bit of research. Yeah. Australian wallabies in Scotland's Loch Lomond. How mad's that? <sighs> What's a bit mad is, we've probably still got about another 15, 20 to get to the top. Let's push on. Oh, end of the path. What? Headed to the bog fest. And to be fair, I might go this way. It looks a bit nicer. <laughs> oh, mate. This is well slipper. Honestly, if one false move and you'd be chewing grass there, mate, just straight in. Oh, good. <sighs> Nearly there. Well, as I up and pant, it was a long way up. I've got to be honest, I think it was worth it. Bye -bye. Wow. Not a bad little spot to be in the middle of Scotland, man. The infamous Loch Lomond. What a gorgeous, stunning area and a quintessential spot in Scotland, eh? So stoked. It almost tempts me to keep pushing forward and go up north again and hit the NC500, but I just spoke to a local down here and they confirmed like it's thunderstorms back to back for the next week or two, so it would be a waste of time, but. Yeah, this today most definitely wasn't, man. After being in France and the Alps and all that, yeah, I may have mentioned it, I thought Scotland was gonna be a bit of a letdown, but no, not even in the slightest. It's just as beautiful and stunning and awe-aspiring as it ever was, man. It spurs me on for more, but for now, I think we need to start heading back towards the crib. <sighs> think about where we're gonna stay for the night. Huh. Good job I didn't leave a window open or anything, eh? Bloody night now. Anyway, at least it was locked. And I think I've made a decision what we're going to do for the night. I'm going to head down to this spot. It is about a two hour drive, and we might be getting there in the dark, and there's nowhere else around there that I can see that you can stay. So it's all sketchy and dodgy, but I guess we'll give it a go. Oh my days, this route's bringing me through the heart of Glasgow. I was expecting to see wild gangs running the streets in front of my eyes, but it actually looks all right. It looks quite nice. It looks a decent city. I'm sure there's rough areas. Damn posh ones. I wish it had not brought me this way though. A pain in the arse. That's the thing, eh? Well, another massive bump. A bit of few of them. I'm surprised my bloody wheels ain't square by now, but no, that's the thing, isn't it? Like Glasgow, you can't deny it used to have a bit of a reputation for being a bit of a rough hole. Well, I bet now in 2024, mate, it's pretty much posh in comparison to most places. There's a ton of real rough areas in the UK now, eh? It's, uh, yeah, no, just make sure I've got my doors locked. Wind the windows up. I'm joking. Wow, check it out. The Clyde Bridge, no less. Legendary. <laughs> that does look like a bit of a, yeah. What the frick? Am I in the right lane here? Wow. The signs are the other way, look. All my days. I feel like I'm driving on the wrong side of the road, man. I'm not. This dude's doing it in front as well. Man, that's really scary. Imagine if there's just a bus suddenly coming the other way. Poo myself. What? Not good. It's not quite the Mont Blanc tunnel in France, is it? Bloody hell. Let's see what mountainous views we get when we come out the other side. Oh. 
<laughs> it's looking a bit grey and industrial. <laughs> the heartland of Glasgow. Rawr. Tidy, onto the motorway. Nothing like having a motorway going through your, your city. And you know you're on the motorway because you've got all the cameras watching you. Look at the state of this thing, man. Every 20 metres there's a camera. Killed them, Bennett. They want you, man. They're after you. Watching you like hawks. Oh, my days. I'm seeing brake lights everywhere. Let the carnage commence. Gridlock. Look at that. We're already being limited to 40, dude. On a motorway. Get a grip. Well, two hours later then, and good news. We're about set to come off the motorway. Bad news. It's 25 to 8. It's almost raining here and there. And it's starting to get dark. We're definitely rolling in there in the darkness. That's for sure. And to top it off, the bloody football starts in 25 minutes. So we're in a rush now, and we might not make it in time. <sighs> this is a disaster. Mm, just scoping the lead in then. Just past an hour's in the state. We've got a bus network. Oh, mate, it's not totally out of the way, is it? I mean, it is. We're in the middle of kind of nowhere. How can I say that? We're on the edge of Anan. So there is a town round there, but I'm guessing we're a couple of miles off it. It's going to be a spot. It's right near the beach. Definitely going to be a shagger and toker spot. And who knows what else. Let's hope not a dogging spot. Let's hope there's not any no overnight parking signs. That's my fear. Oh, mate. This is us. No height barrier. A van already here. Danger, high tide conceals deep channel. Maybe you can put that deep channel. Don't know. I'm not seeing any no overnight and parking signs though. <gasps> Legendary. Let's grab a spot. What's that dude watching in his van? No way. He's watching one of my wandering where videos. How mad would that be? He's not. He might be. Right, let's grab a spot, man. With a sea view. Well, it's been a bit of a nightmare so far, but I've got to say it, a bit of struck gold. Do, 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 do. As long as the dogs and shags don't turn up later, but no, I think it's all right. Wicked, man. Ah, oh, the Solway Coast, I love this spot, man. So cool. Beautiful. It smells like fish. I don't know, like mouldy fish. With a little flange of cheese in there as well. It's not good. No. Oh, shoot, I just remembered. Football, dude. Let's get the kettle on and get sorted quick, Styler. Whoa, pretty windy out there, I'm not gonna lie. Good news, the crib's all set up in record time. Although, it is quarter past eight already, so we need to get some scran on and the football quickly. And keep our fingers crossed, because it's been going 15 minutes, that my team's not losing already. If you follow the football, Guess which team's mine? It's Chelsea versus Man U tonight. Yeah, Man U. We're crap. We know half the time we don't try. Anyway, too much talk. We need to see what's going on. Good news. I'll turn the football on just in time to see the first goal. It wasn't my team that scored it. Let's just get some food on and feed the belly, I think. Bit of a special one, in all fairness, tonight, don't you know? Oh, I'm not entirely sure what that's doing in there, but uh, yeah, we've got choices. There's a pasta thing going on at the bottom. Oh man, I'm quite tempted with that now. Bear with. This is carbonara, carbonara. Yes, spit it out. Pasta bait, and it's massive. Oh, I think I may as well save it for the family when I get back. Yeah, and do this for tonight. Yes, butter chicken, mate. Curry type thing. Oh, with rice. There's not rice in there. I've got some. Don't worry. Or at least, I think I have. Down in the chaos of the food box, don't you know? Oh man. It's the wrong way around. Got it. It's half broken that end. I can't show you because it's broke and if you touch it, it lets blue. But hey ho. Oh, there's the rice. Oh man, it's like one lump, dude. <sighs> Gotta be honest. I'm gonna throw this one out before we start. I really am feeling my potential for this one being a success. 
as long so we can get everything set up right. Because, <laughs> not only should it be really simple, but I've also got not even a slightly cunning plan, just an idea how I might make it work. Bear with a minute. Well, a massage of the rice. It's doing me rib no good, this. Still feels like one big lump. No, we're good. Anyway, time to put the plan into action. And here's how it goes. Crap. Nice under you. Bear with. Oh no. We can do it by hand. Oh. Yeah, looks messy. You see, this is me thinking. That is probably going to need about five minutes reheating in there. And this rice, yeah, that, that basically just needs reheating for about five minutes. So guess what? I'm going to stick them in together, man. It's just, it, it works. And I think it might work well. Not too much. That really was nearly the whole bag, but hey-ho. All we need now is a stirring device, i.e. a spoon. Oh, and some heat. Damn it, that won't. Not too much. Regulate. Right, I, I'm going to hold my hands up now. I will be getting a new cooker soon. I'm going to bring out the double barrel shotgun. See how we go with that for a while. Because this thing's dead. It needs burying. And I might actually do it. We'll see. For now, let's just not burn dinner. That'd be good. And unique. <laughs> and we'll see. Oh my God. I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking a leaf, but in all honesty, it looks like something that was on the floor of the factory, man, and shouldn't have been put in there. It smells like one of them really Indian spicy things. That's got to go. Well, got to say it, as it steams you up, that thing looks pretty tasty as it's bubbling away. And I've had a little flavouring, and it is pretty damn good. On the flip side of goodness, we just give a penalty away. Got me 2 0 in a minute. We suck, dude. Will he save it? Oh, I don't think he will. I should have put more rice in there, you know. I better wipe it out quick while it's still up. He didn't save it. 2 0. Oh, and how does it taste? Bitter that we're 2 0 down. Oh, no. No, no. The food. Oh, my days. Hitler. What are you doing to me? You've actually made a decent meal. A ready to go butter chicken curry thing. Possibly with the biggest pieces of chicken I've ever seen in my bloody life. There's like half a chicken piece in there. Probably about three chickens all running around in that curry, but yeah. Why not? A disappointment though, but tell you, if you're a football fan, which I guess most of you are not, we've got a player. And he cost £74 million. And instead of scoring goals, he's giving away penalties. I'm not being funny. I think football players are uh, maybe milder, just slightly, just a little bit overpaid. Just saying. Mm. I mean, you could argue that their contribution to positive society is immeasurable. But it's probably not. Just saying. <laughs> morning. Another morning waking up in the crib. I've got to say it, you know, with this trip and the France trip, apart from two days going back to, to my house in the Midlands, I've been living out the back of this car for two months. And it seems a little bit of a mad thing to say, to be honest, but yeah, I feel more at home in the car now than I do at home. This is where I want to be, on the road, traveling around and exploring, you know. But not today, because today, I'm going to be heading back to Leicester. And in all honesty, I think we made the right decision. The weather has come in in full force. All night last night, it was pure heavy rain. It's light rain this morning, but it's massive, really strong winds to go with it. So the weather would have been absolutely insane up on the NC500 and it would have been not fun, if I'm honest. So for now, I'm going to head back. I'm going to readdress see what's going on with this rib and think about where we're heading next really hope you enjoyed this one if you did all the good stuff hit the like button subscribe to keep up the series and definitely hit me in the comments and as always you know you know whatever you're getting up to take it easy enjoy the camp
and stay stealthy.